Thank you. Um, okay, so I guess that's quite a challenge. Um, and maybe, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about what we do with printing. And I was given a similar challenge recently, which was I think a little bit scary as well. I was at South by Southwest and was on a panel where we were to say, can printed electronics save the music industry? And I think the answer is no, but it kind of got me to Austin, so that, that was quite cool. Um, but it's the same kind of challenge, really. Um, so I'll start off by saying that I love print. Um, and that printing really is all about communication. And, and I believe it's people's um, communication medium of choice. Um, it's, it's a beautiful medium. It's something that people want to touch, want to hold, and it's something that you can even smell. And I think also, um, you know, while I was at South by Southwest, I saw Al Gore um, give a talk, and he, he emphasized how printing had enabled d a democracy. So it's something that can, ma it can mass produce, um, and it can, it can mass produce things at low cost, in high volume, and get information out to a lot of people. Um, but I also love electronics. And my background is that I have a degree in electronics and a PhD in physics. Um, and electronics um, really is all about processing, communicating, um, information. Um, but the thing is with electronics is I don't think it has a very good user interface, at least not until recently. So, I mean, traditionally, the user interface for electronics is just a keyboard, video, and mouse. And Apple have done a great job in showing us that if you can just make electronics so you can touch it and interact with it, it changes things in a really big way, in a way where we probably didn't realize how bad the user interface for electronics actually was. So you have print, which is able to mass produce things in high volume. And I think also say with, with print, before the printing press, books used to be printed, I'm sorry, used to be handwritten one by one. And the same is, still, is actually still true for a lot of electronics. Even the iPad, a lot of electronics is, asse are, um, is assembled piece by piece in hand, um, by hand in low cost Asian markets. And what, I, what, what we do is we, we're starting to look at what if we could combine the two so you could have the pervasiveness of print and the power of electronics. So about eight years ago, um, I left the job that I had um, and kind of ventured out on my own, and I turned my garage into a clean room. So I kind of snuck back to the university where, um, in, at Cambridge, went to the skips, borrowed, pinched bits of <laughs> equipment, and I turned my garage into a clean room. And I started to look at how I could use traditional print processes to print transistors. And that worked quite well. I was able to print working transistors. But I realized that that was research for creating devices for the future. In fact, the company where I'd been before, um, they still exist, and they've spent over half a billion dollars doing the research to print transistors to make electronics flexible. And I realized that wasn't necessarily what, what I was about. I'm fascinated with print as a process to make things, but I also want to use the type of electronics that exists right now, so standard silicon electronics. So over the last few years, what I've done is I've brought together a really diverse team of about 10 people. And so um, our skills range from sort of creative and technical and the science side. So graphic design, product design, software, embedded software, electronics. And what we do is we look at how we can combine the type of electronics, the type of chips that you would have in a toy. So you can get a microprocessor that that was the same processor used for the Apple II, you can now get for eight or nine cents. And we look at how, what if we could combine a processor like that in or on a piece of print and use conductive inks within the print to make it so that we can put capacitive touch, the same sort of touch on a phone, onto pieces of print. Add on some batteries and speaker, the kind of thing you'd get in a greetings card, but putting that onto pieces of print, packaging, posters, or whatever. So it's about how we can combine the two. And as what we're trying to do is create that as a platform that has to be inherently manufacturable and has to be in a form that people can actually design with. So we say that we write apps for print. Um, and yeah, I guess that kind of comes maybe with a few downfalls too, that sometimes you might have a piece of print that you want to use and it's having an update sent to it or something. Um, 
Okay, so move, yeah, so moving on. So just showing some of the demos now. So that's kind of like the background of what, what, we've, what we've done and how, we, how we're bringing these two things together. Um, we're working on a project recently with a group of people looking at posters. So what could we do to a poster if we could make it interactive? So I kind of came up with this idea of just putting some touch points on the poster and it will play some noises. So imagine a DJ poster. Um, and no one really understood, understood why anyone would want to do this until I put some sounds on it and the graphics. And I'll press play, but it, it is actually really horrible. But, um, <laughs> so beware for a loud noise. OK, that's enough. <laughs> it is really loud. But, um, but then the thing is, once, um, once people saw that, and once the people we were working with who didn't actually understand why I'd want to do that, once they saw a video that I'd put on YouTube and they showed their clients, they instantly wanted it. Suddenly what was just a poster became something you could touch and something you could interact with. And I think that's what electronics has. It's a two-way communication. And what we're looking at is how we can give that to print. How you can make it so you touch it, it gives something back. How you can kind of create that dialogue in a piece of print. And that was just the beginning, really. So not everything we do is kind of um, just about fun. We try to do things that may be useful as well. So we're working with the pharmaceutical packaging company um, in, um, in how to make a pharma carton more interactive. So what we really want to do is help people um, with this particular thing, or predominantly. Um, so we put a little reassuring, am I there yet, button on the carton. So when you touch the button, it lets you know how long it is until you're next to take your medication. So a little, little light will come on, you know, it'll, remind, it'll say to you, don't worry, you've just taken it, or it's in an hour, or it's in five minutes, and then it starts to warn you. So first of all, primarily, it's about helping you. But also, it has conductive tracks on it. So when you take the tablet, it records when that tablet was taken and resets the counter. And when the carton is taken back to the pharmacist, um, that can upload from the carton and then back to the doctor when the medication was actually taken. So really what it's doing is it's there to monitor people. It's there to capture data. And a huge cost in pharmaceuticals is medical compliance. But predominantly, I think the object we create has to help people. And so people have to want to use it rather than they feel that they're being monitored and watched and the data's captured. I think we're entitled to gather the data, but we have to do something for people first. Um, everyone knows that no tissue carton is complete unless it has a piano on the side. So, so <laughs> that's what we did with this. But, I mean, this comes from, we were working with a packaging company in the US called Graphic Packaging, and we asked them um, about some of their customers, about some of the packaging they create, what drives the sale, and what some of the values are. And they said that with the tissue carton, a lot of the sales are in gas stations. So we thought, if we could put a toy on the side of the tissue carton and someone's on a journey with a family, are they buying a carton of tissues or are they buying a toy? And so also what we've done is we've color coded the keys and we've put a little tear off tab on the side that has the lyrics written in color. So, um, so when you stick that in the top, um, anyone can play the piano so long as you can read and you're not colorblind. And it has a little website on the side that takes you to the web so that you can um, go to the website and download new songs. So really, it's kind of about connecting people then to the internet and maybe having advertising there. So more recently, um, well, particularly because it was asked to come along here and speak, we've created a couple of new demos. And these are downstairs, so you're welcome to come along and have a play. So this is, um, and both of them are A1 size posters that we've kind of suspended in a wooden frame just to show that it's a piece of print with a little bit of electronics stuck on the top. And this one plays music. So there's a bunch of different instruments. If you touch one of the instruments, it starts to play. But it's playing from a sound system that's Bluetooth connected, and it's kind of behind you. So you're just touching the print, and the print is making something happen somewhere else. So you can touch the instruments, bring them in and out, and create this sort of jazz jam. You can do a guitar solo, or a trumpet solo, or whatever you want. And the next thing we've created, um, as well as print and electronics, I also love cake. So we've created this poster there. <laughs> it's important. Um, but I know, you never know which one, to t which one to choose. So we created a poster that would help you choose your cake. So you touch it, and the poster talks to you. And it guides you through a series of questions asking you um, about aspects you might like about cake. And then at the end, it analyzes your personality based on your questions, 
and it doesn't tell you what your cake is there and then, but it Bluetooths to our server, and then it uploads the choice of cake to our Facebook page and our Twitter feed. So you go online to our Facebook and Twitter, and you can find out what your, what your choice of cake is. And hopefully when you're there, you'll click like our page or you'll follow us. So what we're trying to show here is that we can take things like point of purchase that's in the physical world, and then take from the internet some of the things that, that people might have you know, um, finding out what other people buy, um, recommendations from other people, and putting them into piece of print, things in the real world rather than just in the digital world. And we can create an experience that might, it might not, it might not really be about cake, we do that for fun, but it might help you choose a hair product, it might help you choose some makeup, it might be some sort of um, medical diagnostics or something to guide you into a product. So you do that to help people, in the store, in the real world. But what we can be doing through the internet is gathering and capturing that data, and that potentially is really valuable. And if they connect through a Facebook or a Twitter, and they don't mind because they're, they're getting some information, you could find out the who, what, where, when, and why. Anywhere in the world, um, people are interacting with the pieces of point of purchase. So pretty much in conclusion, what I will say is that I don't think that we're witnessing the death of print, but we're witnessing the evolution of print. Thank you. The question one has to ask is how much does it cost? Um, is there a great secret in getting the cost very low because you're printing circuits? I mean, how yeah. much are these interactive panels? So it's not really about cost. That's the question that we get asked from production managers. And what we really want to talk to are marketing people. We want to work with people who see the value in what we create rather than about the cost. So what we try to do is we try to create experiences that can add some value onto a product. Um, and so we sort of believe in starting with things like point of purchase, the value is higher, um, the volume is lower. Um, and so we can start off with a bit of traditional silicon on a board stuck on a piece of print. What we're doing in our research is how to take the bare dye from a silicon chip and embed that into something like a sticker so that then that can be stuck on by a machine in volume and then we can get the cost down. So, and, and really the cost, it depends on what it does and how many you want. And, and should we really think of this technology more as a different form of interactive screen? Because that's essentially what it is, isn't it? It's an interactive screen which you happen to create using print technology. Yeah, it's that and the fact that it can be on or with anything that's printed. So basically what we do is we print capacitive touch. So the type of touch on an iPhone or an iPad, we can print that. So, the type of, so we can either print discrete touch points or we can print XY matrix of a touch points that you could do gestures on. We can print like 100 meters a minute transparent touch screens or we can print opaque touch screens that you could put behind a piece of print. And this, this um, printed cap touch can work even through a centimeter of glass. And these are downstairs for you to play with in the next break and during tomorrow. So, Kate, thank you very okay. much indeed. Thank you.